Here is an email from George to uh, kick things off. He's in Montreal. This is on Alara's Royalty AD. What about this one? Is it a good stock to own? Well, maybe George is looking at our portfolios. This, <laughs> is, a, this is a holding of ours. Alaris is a really interesting company because what they do is they, in effect, provide financing to companies in return for a royalty on their revenues. Uh, so, in a world where investors are looking for uh, predictable cash flows, they've got a portfolio of cash flow generating assets. And uh, then they pay out a lot of that cash flow to their stakeholders. So, it's, uh, it's been a pretty steady grower. Uh, the payout has been pretty steadily growing. Uh, and I don't think you have tremendous risk in any one business that they're invested in. So look at, we're not, we're not looking for rockets here. We're looking for things that are consistent. That's our mandate. And I think this fits in very, very well. And is this company unusual in that uh, they don't provide financing in, in areas where you would expect energy, uh, precious metals? They're in all sorts of different kinds of there, businesses. A lot of them are service businesses, mm -hmm. things with long contracts where they, they have recurring revenue and they allow a company to get financing up front and return for revenue going forward into the future. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a very nice business model and uh, for certain industries it works really well. And it looks like that stock is up about six times in the last uh, several years. Fred's in the Stratford, Ontario with a question on a big insurer in Canada. Go ahead, Fred. Uh, hello, Mark. Uh, hello, David. Hi, Fred. Um, I have a question regarding Sun Life Financial. A number of portfolio managers have uh, mentioned that uh, this stock is going to benefit from higher interest rates. And I have quite a few stocks that I have purchased recently that, um, that are related to the interest rate, and um, they're going to come down very hard if the interest rates go up. I have some mortgage REITs and some, res some other property REITs. So I was wondering if buying um, Sala Financial as a hedge against uh, interest rates going up, um, uh, it would balance out the drop in the other right. stock. If that, sure. uh, that strategy makes sense. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Fred. So, Fred, we, we are shareholders in Sun Life. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, some exposure to life insurance companies. Our biggest exposure would be AIG in the U.S., which I think has some very interesting upside to it over the next couple of years. Uh, Sun Life, I think their business is, has been stabilizing. Certainly their equity portfolio is doing a little bit better. Their sales trends are a little bit better. But you're right, the Life Co's would benefit from higher, higher long-term bond yields. I'm not prepared to tell you that I think you're going to see them anytime soon. Uh, we certainly could back up a half of 1% or something like that. But at this point, I think that more likely we're going to see low interest rates longer. It sounds like you've positioned your portfolio for that. So this would be a good offset. Uh, I think it's not dependent on higher interest rates. Uh, so I think that it is probably a good hedge for your portfolio, and I'm comfortable owning the stock. All right, David. Uh, Greg's in Edmonton. Uh, he's got a uh, question about uh, probably the most topical company today. Go ahead, Greg. Oh, hi, David. Uh, Mark, hi, Greg. you're very prophetic. You, you maybe should be giving pop top picks as well. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Why? What did I predict? <laughs> that somebody would pull on Canadian Tire. <laughs> um, well, <Wow>, okay. <laughs> um, so Canadian Tire popped uh, almost 10 per, ten and a half percent today on the spin out of the REIT. And I noticed in your prior comments, you've gotten out of REITs on most of your uh, in most of your portfolios. Would you be a buyer of the REIT, or would you right. be a buyer of a Canadian Tire stock at this time? I'll hang up and listen. Sure. So, Greg, just to clarify. Um, we, we reduced exposure in the Canadian REITs reasonably significantly over the last few months. You know, they were a remarkably good trade. Our only concern being that Canada seems to be slowing a little, while in the States, comparatively, we can focus on certain areas of the U.S. where housing is getting better or where some of these oil and gas uh, regions are really booming and maybe get a little bit better, more upside. So we do still have a pretty significant REIT exposure, but more in the U.S. than in Canada. In the case of the Canadian Tire uh, potential REIT spin-out, this isn't something that's completely unexpected. Uh, I think that the value that they've put on the real estate probably is a little higher than what people thought, and so that provides some upside. I think that it, I think it's very interesting. You know, you're, you're playing two themes here. One is home improvement. I'd prefer to play home improvement in the U.S. Uh, and household spending in the U.S. Uh, than Canada, uh, but Canadian Tire has been behaving very well. Uh, I think the only risk here is um, that it's going to be a single tenant REIT. 
So ultimately, the tenant will be at odds with the REIT in trying to negotiate better lease rates over time. But they're unlocking value. Uh, and so in the short run, there's probably upside in it. And, uh, and certainly, uh, there's lots of folks looking at these types of spin-outs. So I think there is probably upside in it. I just think you may find better opportunity in the U.S. Do you think the Canadian Tire spin out into a REIT and also Loblaw, is that indicating any sort of peak in the REIT market or is that overstated? You know, financial services companies have a way of giving investors what they want. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of financial engineering that takes place, but at the end of the day, it's because there's demand. And uh, we're in a time when the Fed and the ECB and the Bank of Japan have said, you're going to get a zero rate of return on cash, you're going to get a near zero rate of return on fixed income. Uh, so you'd better look at how much risk premium do you expect to get for taking some risk. And, and REITs still are providing actually uh, above historical risk premiums, above what you would get in a government bond. So they're still quite attractive. You just have to assess the assets and the risk. In this one, I think the risk is single tenant. Um, but that being said, very good assets. Okay, uh, David, a short break here. We'll come right back. More questions on Canadian large caps, North American large caps after this.